Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is doing well. So yeah, it's kind of bumpy um, lately, but um, I think overall we should be okay. Uh, the market's been you know on a tear you know, for most of the new year. Uh, well, it's not really new anymore, but like for 2024. So I wouldn't be surprised if we had like a maybe like a correction down to maybe 47.25 ish or so. So I mean, I'm, that's what I'm mentally. Uh, bracing myself for i'm hoping nothing else uh breaks uh but yeah you never know um just keep an eye on your stops um keep an eye on your portfolio and let's see what what spy t can do so i think in bull markets uh they feel great but then people get complacent um you know especially like like around now, uh, then they try to crowd into what they think are safer investments during so-called bad times. Um, and I'm thinking, like, spy, people are probably thinking spy T might be like a way to maybe hide out. And at first, I was thinking, oh, that that's a pretty reasonable assumption. But of course, like, you always have to kind of think ahead uh, because of you're thinking that, then chances are other people are thinking that too. And then if people kind of Let's say like they take the money from Jep Y or Triple Q Y or whatever. And they're thinking, well, maybe they're not feeling that safe in those funds, and they're thinking, oh, well, Spy T looks pretty reasonable. Uh, looks like it's holding up. But then, always take a step back and think through things. Uh, so here's the general ETF equation. Remember, the NAV net asset value of the share price is equal to net assets divided by shares outstanding. So you have to th think through a few things. So first off, well, like on the net asset side, uh, keep an eye on net asset decay and or manager decay. So that that pr basically means like manager incompetence. Uh, maybe they're they're selling things at you know ridiculous levels, or they're not paying attention or whatever. Uh, and then you know obviously asset decay. Uh, no, there's no such thing as a super ETF like. Even with something like SPY T, uh, even if you're holding SPY or IVV, well, you know, if the market corrects, then, you know, obviously, you know, those those assets will correct as well. So you can't expect, like, you know, any any fund to be superhuman. Uh, even though SPY T, even though you're collecting some uh, option premium, it might not be able to offset uh, the, the decline in the asset base. Uh, so just be careful of that. Um, and then for in particular for option based uh, high yield ETFs, uh, you know I've been warning that you know you know before like the like this this new uh, escalation in, in conflict, uh, you know volatility was kind of low and now it's kind of you know creeping back up, so certain funds will get hurt. Uh, so sh you know if you're short volatility, if you're not collecting enough premium, you know there are certain days that you're gonna get 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 smacked around a little bit. And also remember, like when anytime you're short volatility, you have a you know generally a higher probability of success. But sometimes like the, the risk reward isn't so great. And then that that leads to a uh, what I call a credit claw clawback risk. So for example, you're you're collecting money on either a cover call or a cover call spread. Uh, you know, whatever you collect in premium either like it might not compensate like the decline in the asset price or uh, let's say you know in a in a good way like if the market screams back higher uh, and then you're you didn't participate in like the full upside so there's always like that that risk too um, and then of course like shares outstanding this is probably where like where my concern for spy t would be uh, you know every ETF is going to be subject to, like, you know, unfortunately, uh, what I call high yield tourism. Uh, I think people are piling into like the highest yielding. Like, they, you know, they don't bother to take a look at either like the assets or the prospectus, uh, you know, basic things like expense ratios and things like that. Uh, so, unfortunately, you know, if too, like your share count is increasing at a rate greater than like the assets uh, growth, then, you know, of course, like you, you're gonna see some yield dilution. So watch out for uncontrolled uh, share count growth. So spy T in particular, um, 
I would say it has firmer delta uh, just because it has actual ETF shares uh, as opposed to synthetic long positions. Um, and I've noticed like with SPY-T, uh, originally they had like, you know, just the SPY shares, then they switched to, you know, combination of SPY and IVV. And then right now uh, they have IVV, but of course that's subject to change. So you'll uh, also have to watch out for maybe like these I guess like at the end of the year, there, there might be some short-term capital gains or losses, depending on how they did. Uh, and this is just based on 26 trading days. Uh, you know, I guess for some reason, I'm getting a lot of hate lately. Uh, I don't know if it's due to just like the market decline or whatnot. People might be emotional, but, you know, that's fine. Uh, just keep your emotions in check and... You know, just look at your numbers, look at your stats. Uh, that's the most important thing. Uh, of course, like if you don't like these stats, you can always like compile them yourself. Um, and then all, always like, you know, keep on top of your portfolio and keep checking because things won't always like stay the same. Uh, so I've noticed what like the spread strike with is pretty interesting. Uh, they started with like a 10 point wide. Uh, once they went up to like a 20 point wide, I am not sure if there were I guess in the early days, they're maybe doing some experimentation and I've noticed like they've kind of like settled on like 15 point wide, but again, uh, this is subject to change. Uh, so the credit collected, I have noted that the average was $6.68. Uh, the max was $9.45 and the min uh, was like $3.60. And the, in terms of like the risk, uh, the average was seven dollars and ninety three cents. Uh, the max was thirteen dollars and five cents, and the min was uh, five dollars and thirty five cents. Um, and then the credit collected per share stats, uh, I've noted that the average you're collecting like maybe nine cents per day in terms of like, uh, you know, for every share that you have. Um, and then the max is twenty one cents, and the min of uh, this kind of skimpy like three cents. Uh, I've noticed. Well, this is just my guess. Um, I think they might be targeting 12 basis points per day, uh, which is about you know half of like what they collect on the regular uh, triple QY and JPY and IWMY. So this is pretty interesting. Um, I'm not sure what to make of that for now, but it seems pretty reasonable since you're, you're capping your the, your credit collected uh, via a, a credit spread. Um, and then look the risk reward stats. I like noticed like the average, it's you know you're risking one to make a dollar twenty six, so it's almost a coin flip. Um, and then the max is like you're collecting one to two, you're risking one to make two dollars and fifty one cents, which is you know the ideal. But of course you're not going to get that every day. And of course like there are some days where where the it could be bad where you're risking one dollar to make fifty nine cents, which you know, in the long term, that you know, that's obviously not a viable strategy. So hopefully, they can uh, keep to like this average at least. Um, so at least like the risk reward is, you know, there's some positive edge here. And this is just my hopes. I'm um, hoping that the that because like the since they're collecting about 12 basis points a day, that that gives them enough room to to create a buffer for themselves, so that like you know, when there's bad days, uh, you know, just like lousy days in the markets, like like recently and of course like there's like tourist outflows and you know just in general like acid erosion or whatever you want to call it um, and then also like I think that would probably help improve the image in the high yield community because I think sometimes uh, maybe people are kind of feeling frustrated uh, I guess like people in general just don't like to see um, you know price declines in the ETFs or, or I guess like any any type of uh, investment. So, but if, but again, like you have to be fair and compare it to like what you're getting in the market. So, you know, hopefully people um, maybe use this as like a learning moment. So I'm, so my, I guess like my main takeaway is like, I'm cautiously optimistic, but of course you always have to stay on top of your portfolio. And like, I'm, I'm thinking like it's for myself personally, uh, might be best to like grab whatever you can uh, because even good ETFs can get ruined with enough time. Um, and then this is just kind of a side note. I don't expect much community support for Panda, especially on like, you know, when we're in like bad days or going through like a rough patch. 
Uh, so you might want to learn how to do this yourself. Um, cause I, I honestly, you know, I, I think maybe I had a, like a, had a misjudgment, um, in terms of like the high yield community. I don't think it's going to be, uh, supportive of like this channel, uh, going forward. So, you know, I'm just bracing myself for that, for that impact as well. Uh, but anyway, uh, hopefully, you know, this, this is just a rough patch. Um, well, I mean, we were, we were due for a correction anyway, so hopefully it doesn't get worse than that. Cause I, I still think 2024, uh, should still be a up year. I mean, it won't be fun at some points, but Hey, you know, just to never know. Um, so if you like this type of content, uh, please consider giving this a like, uh, well, you know, if you want, you can subscribe, uh, super thanks. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll, I'll try to get to like all reasonable requests and topics, uh, as soon as you can. And I hope everyone stays safe out there. Uh, uh, try to make some good money out there. Like even if you have to short, you know, um, you know, that's also something you can consider. Uh, so have a good one and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.